Well, we now need to carry our ideas beyond the homogeneous half space to a two layer problem. And um, we'll go into multi layer problems uh, beyond that, but um, uh, we'll take a look here at a two layer problem. This is the problem that we're going to solve. I think we'll you know, solve it in the next video, but we'll get it all set up here. And the problem is that you you're measuring the potential difference with an electrode system. One of the electrodes and one of the potential current electrodes and one of the potential electrodes are located in infinity. And you're assuming that you have a current of 0.5 amperes. And you want to compute the potential difference between the electrodes at P sub A and infinity. And you're, you know, you're given these uh, different parameters, D1, D2, and, and so on. <coughs> So, diagrammatically, what we're dealing with here is we've got two media, we've got a dipping interface, we've got our source electrode over here, but our sink electrode is off at a great distance, and also our other potential electrode is off at a great distance. And we're just considering the potential at this particular electrode, as we did when we started to develop the ideas for... Um, you know, the relationship between the potential difference to resistivity and the distances to uh, different electrodes. So, we'll, <clears throat> we'll talk about this image point in a minute, but you'll notice that the source electrode that we have current traveling down to the potential electrode directly along a direct path with a length, D, length, length D1, and then we have a reflection path, uh, total length A plus B, equal to D2. So this is this is kind of the basic geometry. And so we're going to start by looking at uh, the potential of point A associated with the uh, direct and reflected current flow. So <clears throat> in order to do this we take advantage of the image point but the key ideas are that we know that when the current strikes this interface that you know along its entire wavefront that some of it is going to go through uh, the interface some of it will be transmitted and then some of it will be reflected back uh, into into this uh, medium one so we have a, a fraction that's transmitted and then we have a fraction which is reflected back into the medium and that fraction is referred to as k, and that's also what we call our reflection coefficient. So diagrammatically, we have uh, our source electrode. We have a reflection path here. We're going to just take a look at that for a minute. We've got our image point over here. And the idea of the image point is that, uh, you know, imagine that you're looking at a mirror. Imagine this is a mirror. You're standing here at the source. You look into the mirror, or it could be a uh, could be a tinted window, and you see your reflection. And your reflection, you appear to be over here. So this is your image point. And basically, the way to construct that is just to draw a line normal to the reflecting interface from your point of observation or from the source at right angles to this interface and then extend it that same distance L across the interface to locate the image point. Now we can think of, we can use the image point to kind of simplify the math because the total length of the ref reflection path, which we called A plus B or D2, is just the total length of this line here. So we can easily get this length. We can also easily locate the reflection point just by extending this line from the image point to the point of observation where it intersects the dipping surface is our reflection point. So nicely we get that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of re reflection as we should. So, <clears throat> the potential at A is due to the direct path. We already know how to solve that problem. Uh, nothing new in the reflection path. We just had to do a little bit of um, geometry uh, in order to determine its length. 
we show that it's easy to determine its length just using the uh, uh, length of the uh, path directly from the image point down here to get our D2. So the other thing is that when the current is reflected back into the medium, there's only a certain fraction of the current which is reflected. And that fraction is the fraction K. So now we have two terms. We have the direct current flow, which gives us current times the resistivity in the first medium over 2 pi d1, which would be the length of this path, plus k, the amount reflected back uh, along this reflection path. Again, we're in medium 1, so we use row, row 1. But we have 2 pi and then d2, which is our a plus b. It's the length of this reflection path. So k is, again, the proportion of the current that's reflected back into medium 1. It's also known as the reflection coefficient. So that problem was easy to solve. Now let's take a look at this problem. <clears throat> Here we have a potential over in medium 2. And we know that, well, if k is reflected back, then 1 minus k must be transmitted through this interface. So again, we have another simple problem because we, you know, the length of the reflection path, we didn't include the refraction here, but uh, just whatever its length is, you could work out its, you know, the refraction path length uh, using uh, rho 1 tan theta 1 is equal to rho 2 tan theta 2, you know, solve, solve the refraction angle. Uh, but we're just, you know, showing it as d3 here, so the potential at point B is just equal to the current times 1 minus K. This is the fraction of uh, the current which is transmitted through the interface times rho 2. Well, our point of observation is in medium 2. And then we're just dividing that by 2 pi D3. D3 is just the length of the um, uh, travel path. <coughs> So now we're going to take a look at a point which is sitting right on the boundary <clears throat> at a distance d4. And we know that, that we're going to get in the limit that uh, delta d, this delta d here, uh, goes to zero. We're going to bring the point in to the boundary from the row one side, and then we'll bring the point into the boundary from the row two side. Uh, and we know that at this point, the two potentials should be equal. So, uh, so we have a relationship like this where the potential at d4 minus delta d is going to be equal to the potential at d4 plus delta d. In the limit that this delta t drops off to zero, we're going to be sitting right on the boundary. So, so you know that that makes sense that, that, that these two potentials should actually be equal there. Uh, we don't have a, a jump in potential. <clears throat> so to the left in medium 1, we get the potential V1 over here, which is going to be rho 1 over 2 pi d4. So that's down to the reflection point. Then we're going to have a fraction of the current, k, times rho 1 over 2 pi d4 plus delta d. So we go down here, we reflect, we come back a distance, delta d. So the total path length here is d4 plus delta d. Now on the v2 side, <coughs> we go back and use that uh, equation that we just came up with. So we know that the fraction of the current 1 minus k is going to be transmitted through the interface. And we're in row 2, we're in the medium row 2 again. And this will be divided by 2 pi times this distance, the travel distance, which is d4 plus delta d. So in the limit, again, that delta d goes to 0, we should have v1 equal to v2. And these two relationships should be equal to each other. Delta d goes to 0. So we have this relationship. v1 should be equal to v2 when delta d goes to zero. 
V1 equal V2 is equal to V then, so that we have, we're letting delta D go to zero, we have I rho 1 over 2 pi D4 plus K rho 1 over 2 pi D4 should be equal to I times 1 minus K times rho 2 over 2 pi D4. So solve for the reflection coefficient. So this would be something that you should do, be able to do, pretty straightforward, just you know, some algebraic manipulation here. And when you do, you'll find that k is equal to rho 2 minus rho 1 over rho 1 plus rho 2. And um, this um, uh, may have a familiar looking, may have a familiar look to it because k, you know, when you're working with uh, mechanical waves or seismic waves, would be equal to r, and that would be equal to the difference in the impedances over the average of the impedance. So, so next time we're going to come back and we'll take a look. We'll solve that problem. We'll, uh, but I would suggest that uh, between now and, and the next time that you figure out what the potential at A is, uh, you know, given these parameters that D1 is equal to 50, that D2 is equal to 100, row 1 is equal to 30, and row 2 is equal to 350. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining us.